So you'll recall when the committee of conference, or excuse me, when H449 left the house, it contained uh, two major um, provisions, one relating to the modernization of VPIC and, uh, and transformation of that into a more independent entity um, with uh, you know, with some board best practices changes in the makeup of the committee. Um, and it included a task force to study pension benefit um, and plan design uh, over the interim. Uh, the Senate added a third um, reform to the bill, uh, which is in keeping with uh, a bill that Representative Colston introduced and is currently hanging on our wall, but that we didn't have time to, uh, to take up and, and do work on, uh, which would call for the legislature to create a, a pension oversight uh, committee, a joint oversight committee. And so the way you should think of that is, um, you know, we all recognize that the pension system is complicated um, and that the legislature has typically not had very close um, contact or oversight with uh, either the investment side or the benefit design side um, until and unless something hits a crisis point, which is uh, where we find ourselves this year. And so this ongoing oversight will be three House and three Senate members who can really build um, a, a body of knowledge and understanding about how the pension is uh, functioning and hopefully we'll be able to give the legislature just a little bit more of a view into how things are going so that we don't get so far off the rails um, and have to hit the panic button like we are now. Uh, so we agreed with the, uh, the creation of this ongoing oversight um, uh, committee and we we offered a couple of tweaks um, with respect to the VPIC changes that they made, um, not terribly substantive, but um, they had, the Senate had tweaked the definition of independent and, uh, and we, we wanted to hold firm that, uh, that in order to be an independent appointee to the VPIC, you should not have a spouse who is a beneficiary. Um, and, the, and we gave the Senate um, their request that some, simply because someone has a parent or a child who's a beneficiary uh, shouldn't impact their independence. Um, we also uh, asked the Senate to uh, put back in the 20 year term limit for the chair. Uh, we know that the, um, we know that VPIC is doing their own analysis of, uh, of how to, how to best structure themselves and they may come back with different information in the future about how to do term limits. But for now, we're, uh, the, the Committee of Conference Report um, has the 20 year term limit for the chair back in, which was the House's position. Um, we had uh, the, I think the, the bulk of the conversation between the House and the Senate was on the makeup of the task force. Uh, the House felt very, we, we felt very strongly that we needed three House members to be on, um, on this task force because it is a big lift to bring those recommendations back to the legislature and having three voices uh, coming back to the House uh, with firsthand information about how the task force uh, arrived at its recommendations was really important to us. Um, and so the Senate agreed that, that they would stay at two members, the House would get three members on the task force. Um, and in order to maintain the balance on that task force that was important to the Senate, uh, they've designated the treasurer's appointee as being a non-voting member. And so the Senate got their way with respect to the overall balance of plan participant versus non-participant. Um, and the House was able to get our number up to three, which was important to us. Um, there was uh, a little bit of back and forth about who the administration appointee should be, and uh, the House felt strongly that it should be the commissioner of DFR, and um, ultimately the Senate agreed to our position on that. How am I doing so far, Reps LeClaire and Gannon? Perfect. Outstanding. <laughs> it's bringing tears to my eyes. Oh, super. <laughs> I know because you're having, you're having flashbacks to the, the long intense negotiations in the committee of conference. 
that's a joke. It wasn't tense, nor was it particularly long. Um, there were a few other uh, sort of miscellaneous changes. Um, the we we felt that this um, standing oversight committee of House and Senate members should start their work uh, um, upon the uh, interim report of the task force, so that those three House and three Senate members can also be um, part of uh, understanding how to bring the task force recommendations back for legislative action next year. So the task force will start in October when the interim um, report of the task force is due. Um, we, let's see, we changed uh, a few things about the duties of the task force um, that the co-chairs, uh, that's a House and a Senate member who are co-chairs, can create subcommittees because we recognize that you know, there's there may be a deep dive that we need to do into how to prefund OPEB or uh, or something like that, um, and uh, you know it doesn't make sense for the entire task force to to have to be at the table for that. So we'll be able to create some subcommittees. Um, we designated that there could be up to 20 meetings of the task force because you'll recall that the Senate version of the bill extended the due date for the report. Um, and we want them to be able to meet weekly um, during the course of, of their meeting times. So we've bumped that up to 20 meetings. Uh, let's see. We are renaming the, the Public Pension Commission so that nobody um, confuses whether we're talking about uh, pensions in general, or only our public pensions. And I think that's it for the miscellaneous changes. Did I miss anything? Oh, Representative Higley has a question and then Rep Scannon and LeClaire can tell me if I missed anything. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just curious, uh, so this uh, oversight committee is gonna start in October. Uh, is there a number of times that they can meet uh, from then until January, and what about beyond? Um, I'm gonna have to dredge the details of the bill to know whether there's... Um... They can meet six times during an adjournment. Okay. That's modeled on your typical interim oversight. I don't expect they'll meet six times this year. And their per diem amount is the same as Everybody, every, yes. everybody else is right. Standard yeah. legislative Thank you. interim. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Rep. Dehovsky. Um, I remember that the other question, and I wish I had had the time to follow this more closely, but one of the other places where the House and the Senate came down pretty differently was in the charge of the task force. Where did that land? Ooh, I'm going to have to ask. Um, Representative Gannon to help me with that because <laughs> there were there were um, there were a couple of changes in the Senate version of the the duties of the task force. We had um, we we accepted their range of uh, twenty five to one hundred percent of the uh, increase in the ADEC. So you'll recall that you know we were aiming at at trying to reduce the long-term obligation by the amount of the increase from this past year. And the Senate felt that it was more important to give a range and um, we agreed to that. Rep Gannon, anything else that? Um, most of their other changes was to, to um, put some of our powers and duties in more plain English, but they're fairly consistent. Um, with what we proposed. Um, Representative Claire did raise a question because they did take out the part about looking at um, defined contribution plans or hybrid plans, um, but we believe that the language is broad enough so that the task force um, can look into that. And the Senate agreed that they thought that that language was broad enough. Thank you. Any other questions? Rep. Higley? Yeah, so uh, Madam Chair and Vice Chair, I, you know, to take that piece out, I, I don't get it. I mean, why would they take out the piece about 
looking at a possible defined uh, contribution plan. I mean, granted that you're saying that they still feel that they can look at that, but why, why take it out then? I don't get it. My opinion is they aren't gonna look at it and I'm sorry for that. Well, I mean, we asked them if we, th you know, I th and Representative, oops, Re Representative Claire has his hand up. Yeah, um, a, a good question, Representative Higley. That was one of my concerns and um, they didn't have a really specific reason for taking out the explicit language, but they were very clear and we made sure that there was no options that are taken off the table by the existing language, that they can and will look at everything. But um, that was a question that, that was asked as to, you know, why, and we didn't get any real specific reasons back. I think you can surmise that there may have been some conversations that were the motivation behind that. But again, they were very clear that nothing is off the table. Hang on just a moment. Sorry, I was distracted for a moment. Um, so Representative Higley, I, I wish that I understood the workings in the minds of the Senate Government Operations Committee. I can't say that I entirely understand, but, um, but I, I want to assure you that we've done our diligence to make sure that um, that, that being able to look at that, um, that possible change in um, benefit design is still possible and it, it is the intention of the house that, uh, that we would go ahead and, and do that analysis during the course of the task force. Any other questions or comments? about the changes or reps LeClaire or again and anything I missed. All right. Um, is the committee ready to um, take a vote on how we feel about the Committee of Conference report on H449. All right, I would move that we recommend to the body to accept the conference report on H449. When you're ready. I shall begin the roll call. Gannon. Yes. Berwicki. Yes. LeClaire. LeClaire. Hooper. Uh, a qualified yes. Colston, yes. Anthony. Pihowski. Yes. LeFave. No. Higley. No. McCarthy. Yes. Copeland Hansis. Yes. LeClaire. Yes. So, um, so far one? we, go ahead. Was it 821 at this point while we- Yes, 821 at this point. Okay. Um, Let's shift gears at this point to uh, to the last bill on our list, which is S25. Um, Representative Gannon, do you want to talk to us about your technical amendment, and then we can figure out how to proceed with consideration of the Donahue amendment? Um, certainly, Madam Speaker. Um, uh, my amendment is very technical in nature. Um, again, um, even more technical this time. Um, so there are two instances of amendment um, in, in my amendment. The first 
instance of amendment is to add in section eight, um, which is dealing with seven BSA section 881, which is the rulemaking section of um, Act 164 um, in subdivision A1 after subdivision R. This is really important, adding an ellipsis. That's the three little asterisks that tell you that there's something missing um, from the bill. So it was a very technical change. So we're adding a, an ellipsis. Um, and you'll see those throughout S25 where we're leaving out information. Um, so that is the, the first instance amendment. The, the second instance amendment is striking out um, section 20A, 20, which is the effective dates in its entirety and inserting um, new, a new section 20, which reads um, section nine, which is the advertising section and section 18, which is the substance misuse prevention section will take effect on March 1st, 2022. The remaining sections will take effect on passage. The substantive change here is adding section nine, the advertising section to have an effective date of March 1st, 2022. And I note Michelle Childs is here. And so if I get anything wrong, please let me know. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Now you've got, you've got it. The, the delayed effective date for that one section is because it pertains to advertising for dispensaries and the new dispensary laws um, that you passed in Act 164 don't take effect till March 1st. So I just missed that on the first 10 passes on this bill. <laughs> All right, questions? Representative Hooper, you look like you have a question. I do have a question, and since Michelle raised the point that she missed out on it, I'll the the three asterisks again, John, referencing to some physical feature on the mall in Washington D.C. is is what the, indicating the, that we left something out. No, well, so when and maybe Michelle can better explain this than I can. Sure. Um, so when we are drafting um, and you're just amending perhaps one subsection or a subdivision and you don't want to uh, repeat all of the existing language, we use Got a list it. in there. And so that's why you see it throughout all the bills. It just okay. means that there's language that's not showing, but you don't need to see it. Mm -hmm. Right. Other questions from committee members about the technical amendment? All right. Representative Gannon, you want to make a motion? I move to approve um, uh, the, the amendment. Um, draft 1.2 um, dated uh, May 8, 2021 at 3.13 p.m. When you're ready, Rep. Colston. I shall begin the roll call. Gannon. Yes. Mariki. Yes. Leclaire. Yes. Cooper. Yes. Colston. Yes. Anthony. Bihovsky. Yes. Lefebvre. Yes. Higley. Yes. McCarthy. Yes. Copeland Hansis. Yes. 10 0 1. All right. So, um, in Representative Donahue's absence, I'm wondering, Michelle, if you could walk us through the effect of the amendment that she is proposing. Sure. So everybody has the copy. Uh, it's draft 2.1 dated the 18th at 518 yesterday. Um, so in the first instance of amendments, um, so you might recall or perhaps not, um, it was uh, uh, that uh, last year in Act 164, um, so you had, I think there were 11 House committees that weighed in on, uh, on Act, on, uh, what was S54, um, and many of them did it informally. And 
um, House Healthcare looked at it, and one of the things that they recommended to you and that you included in your amendment to the floor, and that was in the House proposal of amendment, was that in the rulemaking, the board is to, con is, um, to develop health warnings um, in consultation with the Department of Health um, with regard to labeling requirements. And, um, and so in the Senate, they, their preference was, uh, no, sorry, you did it that it would be the Department of Health. Sorry, I got this twisted. Uh, the health position was that the Department of Health would do them solely, and then the board would then adopt them and use them on labels. The Senate position was for the board to do it in consultation with the Department of Health. Um, in conference committee, the, um, the House acceded to the Senate position on this right here in this first instance of amendment. And so what uh, Representative Donahue is doing is, um, is going back to the House position prior to the conference agreement um, with there in the first instance. So it would be including health warnings developed by the Department of Health rather than the board doing it in consultation with the Department of Health. The second instance of amendment um, is doing the same thing with regard to dispensaries. So the first instance of amendment applies to the cannabis establishments for the commercial adult use market. And then the second instance of amendment applies to dispensaries for the medical program. Same, same thing, same issue. Um, section, section 16C, um, so you'll, you might recall that in the adult use uh, market, there is a requirement that there's a flyer handed out by retailers and integrated licensees that has uh, some, a variety of, of warnings, don't drive or operate heavy machinery and et cetera, et cetera, and also has health warnings in there. And that one is that the, you did put it, I think that the board develops it in consultation with the Department of Health. Um, section 16C doesn't mirror, there isn't a, a flyer requirement for in the dispensaries, um, but uh, in the current law for, for uh, the medical program, there is a requirement that the Department of Public Safety hand out to patients and caregivers when they register for the registry, some health and safety information that's developed by the Department of Health. And so uh, when last year, when the legislature passed Act 164, that provision was not in there. Um, that was something that the Senate had not liked the current program um, and wasn't in there. And so uh, what Representative Donahue is doing in Section 16C is taking the language from the current DPS regulatory system with regard to providing information at registration and putting that into the new uh, scheme for the medical registry. Representative Gannon. Thank you. Um, so Michelle, just so, so I am clear, um, in the first instance of amendment, um, that is consistent with the language that of, of S-54 when it left the house, correct? Yes, yes. Then the second, the second instance of amendment is new language that was not in that bill. At least I couldn't find it. It was not in the House proposal because you didn't amend anything on the medical program. Okay. But it was in the conference report. It was in the conference report. Yes. As it's written here? Uh, I sure hope so. <laughs> okay. um, but I will- well, Then the third- Pardon? And then 16C is, is new language. I, I, I is, understand. Is, yes, that is entirely new language. Okay. Thank yep. you. I just wanted to understand what we had done. Sure. And I note to the committee that, you know, we all voted on the conference committee report last year, and that was the final house position. 
was what was contained in the conference committee report. Um, right, so first instance of amendment is going back to house position prior to agreeing to the conference report. Second instance of amendment was agreed to in the conference. Well, it shows it's a, it's going, it's, there was never this amendment because the house didn't have any medical amendments. This was added in the Senate and agreed to by the house. And then the third, and then the 16 B is, is totally new. So Madam Chair, I have completed reading Representative Donahue's email to us. And she did ask if there was another window for her to come in um, to discuss her amendment. So, well, she did not specify a time. She did ask um, for another window. Okay, well, we're, we'll need to, we'll need to um, let the speaker know that we have not yet been able to hear from Representative Donahue. Um, why don't you go ahead and have a committee discussion about the Donahue amendment if anyone needs any clarifying information or context. I'm going to uh, go off screen for a moment and um, reach out to the speaker. Show. I'm just wondering if last year or maybe at some point on the Senate side, we heard about the health department's capacity to develop these warnings. Something tells me in this moment of pandemic, they might have their hands full. It, that, that's a very good point. Um, I, I think we did. I don't think last year when it was discussed that obviously it was actually before the pandemic that we worked on this bill. So I don't think their capacity was at issue at that time. And I think that whether you take Representative Donahue's amendment or not, they're gonna be involved in the process of developing um, the labeling language because it was either, either the way it's in the bill now, it's in consultation with the Department of Health um, or in Representative Donahue's amendment, it's the Department of Health doing it. So. But I do think you raise a fair point about the capacity of the Department of Health to do it right now. Any other questions or thoughts? So, you know, I just want to raise, you know, you know, we're in a very different position um, this year than we were when we worked on this language in S-54. I mean, the Cannabis Control Board has been appointed by the governor um, and this would be taking away authority from a brand new board. Um, and I think that's something we have to consider. I'm not, I'm not really sure that the distinction here between co in consultation with the Department of Health and having the Department of Health write things for an existing board is that important. Um, you know, I mean, you've all heard um, Chair Peppers testify. Um, I think he is very open um, to having a dialogue um, with anybody that's interested in the regulation of cannabis. Um, so, I mean, I think there is a question of whether we are supporting the board um, with respect to these amendments. Um, so I think that's something we need to take into consideration. Representative Hooper, you have a question or comment? Well, I have a comment, I guess. I, I did perk up a little bit when Representative Donahue mentioned um, who writes the, the, the story on tobacco and alcohol to some degree, <clears throat> and that there is a, a little bit of a intertwine between the people who are going to make money on the board and who are, are not to, some, to a minimal degree, um, not enough to influence my saying this should go forward, um, but that, that seemed to be on the fringe of a valid point for me. Thank you. Representative LeClaire, do you have a question? Um, well, I think it's more of a comment. Um, I do remember us having a very robust conversation around this. And I believe where we wound up was that the board was going to have a lot of decisions they needed to make. And that's why you'll see that we expanded the advisory 
group that they'll be interacting with. And there wasn't any question, at least in my mind, and I think others, that they would be looking to the Department of Health and others to formulate these advisories and warnings going forward. Um, so I think that they are, the expectation is they're gonna have the input. And so I, I think that that's why we wound up where we did by giving the resources to the board. Uh, Representative Bihovsky? Um, My other, and it, it's sort of a question just to kind of clarify, my other question around some of the amendments to the medical piece, my understanding is we're kind of coming back to that medical advisory group and really trying to make a more robust piece there. And so I almost wonder if it makes sense to really wait to do any amendments to medical use until we've had that co larger conversation. Am I correct in, in my thinking? Rep. Cannon. Sure. Um, so you, you're right, Representative Vihoski. I mean, we, I mean, we had a long discussion in our committee um, this year about continuing the um, what is it, the Committee for Marijuana Symptom Relief Oversight Committee, um, and that it's our intent that that it, it remains standing up and that it becomes part of the advisory um, committee um, to the Cannabis Control Board. Um, and I would think that they would want to have some input um, into the warnings um, that are being developed. Um, I think that's a very good point. All right. Um, <clears throat> any other questions about the content of the proposed amendment? All right. Um, I have communicated with the speaker and she would like us to come to the floor as soon as we can and uh, she's suggesting that they will move um, the conference report on the T bill uh, which before we get to s25 which should give us time to track down representative Donahue and invite her to come back here to committee to help us um, uh, to help us understand what she's proposing uh, so that we can then take a vote on it. And uh, so unless there's other questions or committee discussion, um, I think we should head to the floor now and just keeping in mind folks that we need to come straight away back here so that we can get an official vote on the Donahue amendment before we do S25 on the floor. Um, and Representative Colston, I'm guessing that you would like to continue um, the roll call on several of our uh, votes with Peter Anthony. That is correct, Madam Chair. Um, for H-135, uh, which is uh, to concur with the Senate amendment, so far, the vote is 10 0 1. Anthony? Yes. Thank you. And on H 122, uh, Act Relating to Boards and Commissions, uh, to concur with the Senate Amendment, our vote currently is 10 0 1. Anthony? Yes. Thank you. And uh, H25, uh, this is the Gannon uh, Amendment. S25. Uh, I'm sorry, S25, thank you. And uh, currently the vote is 1001. Anthony? Yes. Thank you. And last, uh, H449 on the, uh, the pension uh, bill, the amendment to concur with the Senate. Currently, the vote is uh, eight uh, two zero. Anthony? Yes. Thank you. And thank you all. And I apologize uh, for rudely abandoning the, <clears throat> the troop. <laughs> Not to worry. <laughs> we're, we're glad you're back. None of us saw you leave. We just looked up, and all of a sudden, you were gone. There's a yellow screen, right? You've been abducted <laughs> by aliens. Indeed. <clears throat> all right. Representative Colston, uh, does that get us? Yes, I'm all set. Sorry, okay. I was just, what's the final on 337? I think that was 11-0. 
Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm heading over now. All right, um, good work this morning, folks. We'll come back and do this all again at, uh, as soon as we get the okay to uh, come back to finish our work on S25. See you on the floor. Thank you.